So the sequence of uh, sedimentary structures also varies with grain size, and that's because the grains respond differently in the different flows. Each one of these symbols right, right here represents an experiment in a flume with a specific flow speed and a, fit, a, a specific flow depth. So almost always the flow depth is less than one meter uh, for practical reasons. Okay, But we know that the flow depth and the flow speed both matter for sediment transport. So each one of these open circles represents uh, a time, a condition of grain size and flow speed that produces uh, ripple cross laminations. All right, each closed one here uh, produced dunes, and the triangles up here uh, produced upper planar uh, bedding. And the crosses produced anti-dunes. Okay. And you'll notice that sometimes there are experiments that don't quite follow the lines that are drawn. The lines are drawn sort of generally uh, between the fields. Okay. And then down here, there's a there's a set of conditions with no mo no movement or motion of the grains. And then there's this zone in here and course. Uh, material which is called lower planar. Okay. So uh, we can take a look at this uh, diagram. There, there are several interesting uh, things about it. Uh, the first is that at fine grain sizes you only have a sequence of ripples and upper planar beds and then anti-dunes. Right, so so at a sort of a very fine sand grain size here, your sequence of structures is different than it is at something that's say a uh, granule or very coarse sand, where you have a lower planar bed uh, going up uh, into anti dunes. Right, so the first key point is that grain sizes. Uh, matter. For which structures that you get move. You actually get planar uh, lamination instead of ripples in this zone here because the, how the grains stick up into the flow strongly affects which ones that which ones move. So if we look at an example of large grains. So let's say that these are uh, the average uh, two millimeter grains here. One of the things that happens is that they stick up high enough into the flow that grains that are above the average flow uh, move much more easily. So this grain right here has more exposure to the shear and, and it is likely to, to roll down to the next spot. Okay. And then it's still sticking up some more, so maybe it rolls down again and gets caught into the flow. Right? And so the grains actually can't pile up uh, at these higher grain sizes to make make the ripples. However, they can start piling up to make dunes, and so um, we get maybe a grain transporting transported there. And if I add some more downstream, once you get a large enough high and an anomaly, the flow starts getting directed up, and then you can catch more grains. In the zone here, and any grains that fall off the other side right, uh, will be deposited on the downstream side of a dune, uh, like like that happens in a ripple. Okay. So the the second point 
is that the um, uh, transitions between bed forms depend on the characteristics of the uh, grains and the structure and the flow, and specifically uh, the turbulence. 